Good evening and welcome to KSAT's monthly neighborhood newscast where we take our show on the road to learn more about the community that we all call home. Tonight's episode of Know My Neighborhood brings us to Shearer Hills Ridgeview. You are looking at a live picture high above the neighborhood where you're going to find places that make it special like those iconic cowboy boots outside of North Star Mall and areas where people are dealing with differences like the Migrant Resource Center right off San Pedro. And tonight we are live inside the roller cage, just one of many places that make up the Shearer Hills Ridgeview neighborhood. So where is the neighborhood located exactly? Well, it lies north of Bassey Road to Loop 410, spanning as far as Blanco Road to Highway 281. Welcome inside the roller cage and good evening. I'm Steve Spreester and I'm Myra Arthur. We are broadcasting live from a place iconic for its sign, notable for its nostalgia. It's been up and running this roller cage since 1959. Yeah, and it was actually built around the same time that the Shearer Hills Ridgeview neighborhood was built, the 1950s. So to get a better idea of what this neighborhood is all about, we went for a walk and a ride with a local rock musician and sat on the front porch and sip tea with some longtime residents. Take a look. Come on, all the way. Come on. There you go, buddy. We've never interviewed a rock and roller for Know My Neighborhood before, so can you say action first? Please. Action. <laughs> My house was built in 1956, and so most of these houses are that era from like 54 to 58. The Mad Men. That's what I was going to say. This yeah. is kind of like the Mad Men neighborhood. It's total Mad Men neighborhood. How long have you guys lived in this neighborhood? 53 years This uh, in January. Well, to us, it's home. It feels like you're in the country, but it you does. are right. You're right in the middle of the city. In the middle of the city. The, so, so convenient. All that development up north, up San Pedro and all that asphalt that was poured and, and all that water runs downhill and we're downhill and it runs right through here down to almost basin so this is a like this is the problem in our neighborhood fyi we got curbs we did not have curbs uh, we had water go through our house my neighbor scott moves his cars off the street because he knows that they might get swept off and into my lawn which happened um and we're just going to pull up here on the left eric the migrant resource center is in this neighborhood what has this meant to be in the neighborhood what's the impact been to Shearer Hills and Richview. I was concerned. You know, is there going to be an uptick in crime? And there hasn't been. Are businesses yeah. concerned? Yeah. And has that abated, or is it still a per an issue? I think that's that there's there's a concern probably here at this uh, strip center. I worry for the migrants walking up and down San Pedro because it's so pedestrian adverse. It's it's a it's a, it's a highway with people traveling crazy amounts of speed. I don't even know if I try to cross it. I mean, I was privileged to be able to go in and check it out at the very beginning, and it is not. This, you know, it's it's not a sex trafficking ring. It's none of that stuff. It's just boring. People waiting, families there drinking coffee. Turn right. So we're going through the back door of, of our community walking trail. We got this now concrete trail, which is great for the elderly people that live in the neighborhood. And then we got this exercise equipment and these lights that are now beautiful and it's made it safer. I would really like to walk down there and he likes, to, he would like it too, but uh, there's no bathrooms there. I think it's in the works. Yeah, I think you're getting one. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, with the new bond money, we're getting a Portland Lou bathroom, a beautiful one, one of the metal ones. What do you want people to know about your neighborhood? I don't know, it's a beautiful place to live. There's some history here. There's, there's actually a community that's growing. Describe the neighborhood. What's it like to live in this area? Calm. It's calm. It's familiar. It's easy. It's a great place, and it was a wonderful place to raise our children. It's a secret. It's a secret. That's just what <laughs> I was <anymore>. thinking. <laughs> it won't be after this, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, so much of what is celebrated about this neighborhood is the era in which it came to be. But the 1950s, not a time when being inclusive was a part of everyday life. Yeah, so our Jesse Degollado, as she does on our Know My Neighborhoods, dug into some of the history and found how this neighborhood has blossomed despite some of the seeds that were sown many years ago. Say 
sacred places of worship, prayer, and community of all faiths, past and present, say a lot about the people of Shearer Hills. Still, despite those cornerstones of faith, Shearer Hills was created during racially segregated times, as specified by its developer, H.J. Shearer. Here, it indicates that there are deed restrictions. In the records at the Bear County Clerk's Office, signed by Shearer, was a racial covenant, now barred by federal law. No part of said property shall be sold or occupied by any person of African descent, except as servants. A shocking revelation for Jennifer Neal, the president of the Shearer Hills Ridgeview Neighborhood Association. She and her husband began raising a family here five years ago. To squat down and then back up with it. Right here, young lady. A business owner in the neighborhood, Greg Bell says in 1997, his first house here had one of those antiquated racial covenants and a maid's quarters. This is where the only way someone of my race could have been living in this house in the 50s. In the 50s. Okay. Let's enjoy. About the time Irene Ortiz was a newlywed, when a builder told the young couple about a house in the Almas area. That's too far. I don't want to live out in the boonies. Hard to believe now, but Ortiz says all this was woods. My color was a dirt road. There was no such thing as freeways of any kind. There was no such thing as the mall. Back when San Pedro was the main thoroughfare into town, and why El Montan Motel, or Motor Court as it was known, was built in 1950 to cater to travelers. Yet the builder was quick to assure Ortiz. It, it wasn't going to remain like it is. Sure enough, as he predicted, the Almas Basin golf course was put in in the early 60s, and what were billed as the world's tallest boots stood proudly outside the new North Star Mall on the heels of the post-war building boom. That particular area had some houses already, but there were still lots available. Under renovation is the last of actually two houses the Ortiz bought over the years in Shearer Hills. And as for the neighborhood's namesake? Hey, this is where we came from. Let's keep doing better. Well, I want to know, so, Mr. Spreester, did you catch what I wrote in there? I didn't. So tell me what you wrote. Explain it. <laughs> I caught it. I caught it. Thank you. On I'm the heels. On the heels. Boots. Yes, Love a pun just it. for you. I it, put that in there just for you. Of course, I'm, not the, I'm not the king of punsters. <laughs> Far from it. Far from it. But don't you just love Irene? I yes. mean, that lady could be everyone's abuelita. Yeah. She is so beautiful. And she has so many memories of what this used to be like. Can you believe all this was woods at one time? And that Oblate was pretty much the 1604 of the day yeah. back then. Yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. But certainly, they are very proud of what the neighborhood is come to represent and the diversity and the future of and San that's, Antonio. Yeah. That's the thing I love about Know My Neighborhoods. We get to meet people like Irene and Tony and Aida and Greg and, you know, so many other people through these stories. Thank you, Jesse, so much. Yeah, thanks, Jesse. Thank you. By the way, we are in the midst of open skate here at the <laughs> yes, Roller Cade. It started right at 6 o'clock, and we are bringing this to you live from the Roller Cade just off San Pedro and Ricoleta. We have so much more to get into about the Shearer Hills Ridgeview neighborhood, including some of the traffic troubles they have here. Let's take a look outside live from Drone 12 at the traffic that is part of this neighborhood. San Pedro is what some neighbors referred to as basically a highway right in their own backyard. Yeah, and one of the major concerns in this area is it's not easy to get around if you're not driving places. Some of the major roads so congested and there aren't any bike lanes. We're going to talk more about the dangerous concerns about transportation when we come back. But first, we are back here live inside the roller cade. We said it was open skate. They're apparently letting anyone out there right now. Adam Kasky is rolling around here somewhere. I have some concerns <laughs> on a thermometer Thursday that Adam's going to fall and break a thermometer. Adam. <laughs> you know, there's always a chance of that. <sighs> But it's worth it, worth the risk, worth the risk. You know, I've always had this one kind of dream in life where people always ask the question, if you could have anything, money's no object, what would it be? I always say, oh, a lighted dance floor in my house, right? I'm starting to rethink that, and I'm now leaning toward maybe a roller rink. 
or a lighted roller rink as the big pipe dream. We do have some weather to talk about too. And by the way, outside, if you're a little extra sniffly, we do have higher levels of ash and mulberry in the, in the air. We're starting to get a hint of some of those spring allergens now as we progress into late February and just around the corner is oak season. A cold front is moving through. The wind is shifting. It was very spring-like today. You'll notice some changes soon. We'll talk about that along with our next cold front coming right up. All right, Adam, I just turned around and I looked and I noticed that there are a lot of people skating, but not a lot of people skating around Adam. <laughs> That's probably, probably wise. yeah, these are seasoned skaters. They know what they're doing. Yeah, we've got a lot more coming up in this Know My Neighborhood from the Sheer Hills Ridgeview neighborhood. Dealing with differences. It sits in the middle of this neighborhood. The Migrant Resource Center gets differing opinion amongst neighbors here. We hear from some people who say it is an issue, it is a concern for them, and other neighbors who believe it's not. You're watching Know My Neighborhood, Shearer Hills Ridgeview. We'll be right back. My neighborhood. Those who live in Shearer Hills Ridgeview, they say it is a truly welcoming place. And over the past two years, thousands, literally thousands of temporary neighbors have come and gone in this neighborhood. Yeah, we're talking about the Migrant Resource Center and migrants and the fact that whether they chose to or not, this neighborhood finds itself in the middle of a national border crisis. Our Daniela Ibarra went out and talked to neighbors and about the controversy that this Migrant Resource Center is brought with it. In the summer of 2022, Shearer Hills became the home of the Migrant Resource Center. The city opened the facility to help asylum seekers get to their final destinations. Eric Sandin with the Shearer Hills Neighborhood Association says initially, it took some getting used to. The problems would be sort of low level problems. Like at the beginning, there was a problem with trash because this, when the city began the project, they just didn't have the operations in place. Um, but it's relatively very clean right now. They're, they're doing a good job of cleaning up the trash. Jose from Venezuela is one of more than half a million migrants who've come through the city since 2021. In September, Jose told us he only got to stay inside the facility for a night. Then, he says the curb became his bed, with a view overlooking several Shearer Hills homes, including Mark Hebert's. To him, these nomadic neighbors are a non-issue. There has not been any negative experience that I've had with anybody who's going through the MRC. About half a mile away, Charles Norrie has a different perspective. This is helping or hurting your neighborhood. Well, no question about it. It's, it's, a, it's a, a thumb on the neighborhood. With the Migrant Resource Facility a few blocks away, Nori says he feels like his backyard has become the border. You go to any of the other stores up here in Northtown Plaza, uh, they're just overloaded. Uh, you, you, you can go up there uh, most days and find a large number of people just sitting all ac across the curb in front of the businesses. Nuri and other neighbors say they've seen migrants walking around and at times approaching people. Does it make you feel unsafe at all? Not at all, not in the least. I think there are a lot of folks who are driven by fear and then driven by politics. Hubert wishes people would put politics aside and focus on the people, like Jose, who is trying to support his parents and two kids back in Venezuela, a humanitarian issue right behind these homes. They're like any guest, somebody coming is coming to your home. You want to treat them well. Think about what you'd want if you were wearing their shoes. Have compassion. Yeah, without a doubt. And we did try reaching out to the Migrant Resource Center because we wanted to get a look inside, but we never heard back. One thing I want to point out is that this was supposed to be a temporary facility, and I mean, it's been there for two years. Yeah, we've heard from the mayor who said that for the foreseeable future, it will stay there. Daniela, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Daniela. It's interesting to hear different people how they're dealing with yeah, the differences. Yeah, that's part of the differences. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's go to our uh, resident skater. <laughs> I, earlier on, there were some artistic skaters that were out here doing their thing and trying to see Adam Kasky keep up with them. He was a little out of breath. He was attempting, though. He was attempting. <laughs> yes. I think we have Adam uh, talk about the weather. It's beautiful outside. Thankfully, it's actually air conditioned in here because it's a little warm out there. 
don't know if we're going to hear the forecast. Look at this guy. I know. I know. That's, <laughs> doing a figure eight? Oh, yeah. Backwards crossovers. <laughs> All right. We do have to talk about the weather. Really quickly, we can take a look. Did it on purpose. At our almanac data. We started off in the 60s this morning. Then this afternoon, we got well into the 80s, but still a few degrees shy of 90 degrees. And uh, we're about six degrees shy of the record for the day today. Take a look at the temperatures across our metro area right now. Let's take this full screen so you can really see it. And look at those numbers, 80s still for most of us. Bolverde 83, Stinson 85, Pleasanton, for example, 85 degrees as well. And in Hondo right now at 84, but here's the key. Dew points are dropping. The wind has shifted. Dry line has hit, cold fronts right behind it. Dew points are falling, especially along and west of I-35. And that's gonna call for some cooler mornings in the days ahead. Tomorrow morning, near 50. Saturday will be in the 40s. Sunday will be in the lower 50s for those morning temperatures. So yes, a taste of spring today, but it's not gonna last all that much longer. Tomorrow, 51 in the morning, 70 at noon, 75 the high temperature. Then this weekend, it doesn't get any better than this in South Central Texas. 40s to near 50 in the morning, 70s in the afternoon, sunny and low humidity. Big Blue H, upper level high has been our dominant feature. It's centered over Mexico, but still close enough to us to be influencing our weather and deflecting all the rain and storms and all the activity away from us. And that's going to be the case for Pretty much the next seven days. I mean, yeah, we have a 20% chance of a few showers next Wednesday with our next cold front. That next cold front will be a little more noticeable, but as of now, I'm not anticipating a freeze from that. It's just gonna be a little more noticeable than the one that's moving through right now and that's moving through tonight. By the way, the humidity returns a little bit by Monday. There is some important weather history here in this neighborhood of Shearer Hills and Ridgeview, and we're gonna get into that coming up shortly and a very special thermometer Thursday as well. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Adam. You know, people love how centrally located this neighborhood is. They say it's easy to get around unless you're on a bike or walking. Up next on Know My Neighborhood, we're going to hear from Libby Day. She spends a lot of time cycling the area and tells us why she has to shift gears to get around. Neighbors here in Shearer Hills Ridgeview love how close they are to everything. Close to downtown, close to the airport, close to shopping. Getting there in a car, it's a breeze. But if you're trying to get somewhere by bike, that could be dangerous. Yeah, they told, one cyclist told our Patty Santos that the streets are narrow here and there aren't any bike lanes. Two problems they would like to see fixed. Hi, how are you? Longtime resident Libby Day. Got a lot of oncoming traffic is an avid cyclist. One of my favorite things about this neighborhood is how well positioned it is within the city. She liked to do more of it around her neighborhood. But we're still working with no bike lanes. And to work, but she doesn't dare. And so this is the part of McCullough that really is quite dangerous because the cars coming over the hill, coming into the neighborhood, really don't have good line of sight. And as a cyclist, you're trying to pump up this hill, so you're going slower than you normally would be. So even if you're pretty quick, you're not moving with the flow of traffic. There are no north or south bike lanes that connect the Shearer Hills Ridgeview neighborhood along McCullough, San Pedro, or Blanco to areas with bike lanes. I would love to ride my bike to McAllister and get on the Salado Creek Greenway Trail but getting across 410 is, you know, taking your life into your own hands. Neighbors have asked the city for bike lanes for more than a decade. It was a recommended priority project in the 2011 Bicycle Network Plan. The lanes start to narrow as you get up into the neighborhood right here. Before different elected District 1 council members have failed to deliver on that request. We've done a lot of communication already. A lot of things have been 
communicated and continue to be communicated. But at the end of the day, we're looking for action and we've been looking for action for years. The city is scheduled to update storm drains and add sidewalks along Barbara Drive next year. By 2027, road improvements are planned along Shady Wood Lane from El Monte Avenue to Jones Maltzberger. That same year, VIA plans to begin its rapid Green Line service from the airport through San Pedro into downtown and the Mission Concepcion area. Everything that you need is super close, but there's some challenges when it comes to getting around. So for me to turn, if I have to wait for traffic, I'm just sitting in the middle of the road with no turn lane. That's why Day always got to time that one right. Has learned to take the longer and safer way in and out of her neighborhood. Unless you are a very brave cyclist, um, McCullough is not really your friend once you get out of Almost Park. Okay, Patty joins us live here at the Rollercade. And Patty, this was not easy for you to get answers about these possible improvements. Yeah, for weeks I had been reaching out to District 1 Sucor's office staff to figure out what the holdup is. And here's what we know. Just last night I got that call. Uh, it is not going to happen during her current tenure. It might happen sometime after 2027 because here's what they say they need. They need a traffic study done in that area. And so that's not going to happen if it's put on the 2027 bond. And even after that, it's still not clear whether or if they're going to get those bike lanes, whether it's on McCullough, San Pedro, or any of the other streets that go north and south in this neighborhood. And the city also pointed to TxDOT at some point as well, right? Yeah, there's a, in 2025, there's going to be a, another, 2026, excuse me, a um, improvement at uh, 1604 and 410 and 281. And they're saying, you know, we're waiting for that. But when I asked TxDOT, they say this has nothing to do with streets. So yet again, when I let the neighbors know, they said, uh, that's a long time to wait. Yes, it is. While people like Libby are basically taking their lives into their own hands when they're going down McCullough because there's not bike lanes. Yeah, there. it's pretty dangerous out there. Yeah, yeah. it is. All right, Patty, thank you. All right, we're just getting started with this edition of Know My Neighborhood, Shearer Hills, Ridgeview. Coming up, we're going to talk about a big draw to this area, a mid century modern vibe that's appealing again. We're checking out some of the nostalgia these houses are notorious for after the break. Plus, when it rains, it all goes downhill, literally. The hills aren't just part of the name, they are part of the problem in this neighborhood, where neighbors say the city needs to focus to make sure that flood water doesn't do any more damage. Welcome back to Know My Neighborhood, Shearer Hills Ridgeview, live from the Rollercade here. This neighborhood is centrally located, but it's that location that puts this neighborhood in a bit of a precarious spot. Yeah, it's in the Almost Basin, it's in the Almost Creek watershed, and some of the homes in this neighborhood are actually in the floodplain itself. That can be bad news, mm -hmm. and that was never more evident than the Memorial Day flooding that took place in 2013. Yeah, homes went underwater then, drivers had to be rescued, and as Justin Horn found out, it was that flooding that spurred change to try to save this neighborhood from going through that again. I looked out my front window, and just right there, I saw a car perched against the telephone pole with a child like waving, like he might have been in middle school, waving out um, for help, screaming for help. Realizing there were two kids and their grandmother in the car, Erica and her husband Lewis, along with her brother Bradley, jumped into action. Lewis found a rope and tied himself to a nearby tree. So I had to hold it here with the car here, and, uh, and that's when I just started taking the kids out. And then I saw my brother-in-law show up, and so I was able to give him a couple of the kiddos, and then that's when the lady, you know, we had tried to figure out how to get her out. And so when she came out, again, that was when I went into the water. Water that had become a dangerous raging river. I remember seeing big old chunks of asphalt flipping in the street. Forcing him to take action. I just pretty much grabbed both of them and helped them both get out the water. A heroic act that likely saved the lives of those in the car. That was Memorial Day weekend 2013. And almost 11 years later, the city is still working to improve flood control in the neighborhood. Prior to the flood where I'm standing now, you would have found homes here along Barber Drive and across the canal on Shannon Lee Street, more than 30 of them. After the flood, the city bought these homes and demolished them to help make this canal larger. It was part of the Barber Drive drainage project. 
That was phase one of the project. Phase two has also been completed, while phase three is funded but under design, according to the city of San Antonio, with a price tag for all three phases at $33.8 million. All of it, though, downstream of where the Noriegas live. So they say flooding is still very much an issue. Just last month, their garage flooded from heavy rains. They say it happens often at their home at the corner of Delwood Drive and Beachwood Lane. Is that part of the phase three? It is, so, yeah. but they stop about right here. Yeah. But the infrastructure needs to be up there to pull that water underneath. Right. It's been improved. So like the, and the, what the engineers have told me is that the, the water going down south of like where the, where the channel is, those houses there are protected, but like further upstream, you still have the problem. And for Noriega, she's been on a decade-long quest to make sure this problem doesn't take someone's life. We've been advocating, my mother, all the people that live in this neighborhood, we have been advocating for it to get fixed, for the city to fix it. And like I said, we sit on our porch, and when it is flooding like that, we'll see cars who probably don't know the area and aren't sure that how deep it is, we'll tell them, like, please do not, like, we'll be waving them, like, do not come, yeah, do not cross. And phase three, by the way, is expected to start next year. And I remember 2013 very well. I mean, it was a big flood, did a lot of damage, but this neighborhood is no stranger to floods, that's for sure. I, I can't imagine somebody standing in their front yard warning people, don't come this way. To this day. Steam. Still to this day, there That's is still work wild. to be done. Yeah. yeah. All right, All right let's go back to 2017. You talked about the fact that this is a neighborhood no stranger to weather. In 2017, parts of this neighborhood were hit hard by a tornado. Yeah. And Adam Kasky was there that night. Adam, that's that weather anniversary you were referring to earlier. What do you remember about that night? Oh, I remember everything about that night, starting off watching the individual thunderstorm that caused the tornado as it was just southwest of San Antonio on Highway 90, then it moved to the northeast into town, and it quickly dropped a few tornadoes, but most significantly, the EF2 rated tornado right along Linda Drive, just west of 281. And I remember pulling up to the damage and you know, seeing the, the street signs knocked over, noticing there's roofing on the ground and then as the sun came up the little things that you notice after these strong tornadoes with winds of 120 miles per hour was insulation from homes just pressed up against vehicles outside and one of the most most noticeable changes on linda drive was the change in the beautiful tree canopy that they had big hundred plus year old oak trees were just snapped and their big shady canopy was gone and luckily we were to make at least something good out of that and a little bit of rubble to relic which is something I have here with me right now this is this is wood from an oak tree on Linda Drive Miss Elizondo's house in her backyard and this is the oak tree from that EF2 tornado and I made the thermometer for it. So we did give these to a few of the families on Linda Drive, but something I'll always remember from that. Back to you. Yeah, I remember that well. I remember the tornado that just cut through the neighborhood. Yeah. And I, I, I love the idea of those thermometers that he yes. made out of what was left of the wood. Rubble to relic, something yep. beautiful out of what was a pretty terrible night for this neighborhood. Thank you, Adam. If you are just joining us now, we are live at the Rollercade in the Shearer Hills Ridgeview neighborhood. Definitely a blast from the past style going on inside here. If you step outside into the neighborhood itself, though, you'll see a similar style. The mid-century modern vibe, it's on every block in this neighborhood. We'll take a look at some of that charm when we come back. And it took on a new, fresh look, though, recently with something we now call mid-century modern. Or mid-mod. Mid-mod. That mid-mod design, mid -mod. it is one of the main attractions, one of the hallmarks of this neighborhood. Marilyn Moritz takes us on a pretty retro tour.
Driving these streets is like looking through a retro lens. I was flabbergasted. I was like, wow, look at all these beautiful men from modern homes. And it had that very California, you know, whim whimsical feel. Andrea and Jeff Duarte bought their mid-mod gem 10 years ago. Okay, so this is the original door. Yes, right? it is. Okay. 1958. Yes. It was love at the carport door. The realtor brought us to the carport door. And I put my hands on that island and I literally saw, okay, my kids watching Saturday morning cartoons and I'm making pancakes. Terrazzo floors, interior brick, light fixtures, treasures, and a time capsule. All the windows are still original. Front windows that are above eye level. You can have some privacy, but when you sit on the couch, you get all that nature coming in. You get to see trees. This whole area is uh, 50s, 60s. Architect Rick Lewis says history laid the foundation. People had money. Uh, for the first time, a lot of the people came back from the war, used the GI Bill, got education by the 1960s. They were up and running, and so their home really was their castle. So what are you likely to find in mid-mod castles? Lots of glass. Expansive windows, low-sloped roofs, clean lines, and big backyards for family and entertaining. These houses spoke of living a very different way, a much more casual, and a, a way that was somewhat nostalgic. Is there interest in people buying this style of house? Yes. Realtor Eduardo Magaloni gave us a peek into the past with this listing. The kitchen still has its 50s tile. We're coming into the hall bath, which has a chandelier. That is Barbie pink, isn't it? And th that's back in South. <laughs> what is this? Just decorative? This was a feature where you have your toothbrush holder and cup holder. And something else unexpected. This is the maid's quarters. You don't see I, a lot of that anymore. Do no. You? In, in Shearer Hills, so quite a few houses have the maid's quarters. Times have changed. Now the neighborhood is fondly reminiscent of old sitcoms. All our daughters watching Bewitched right now. Yeah. <laughs> and for Andrea and Jeff, it feels just right. It has some age to it, which feels comforting. And it just, it feels a little more like home. I love that story so much. That pink bathroom. Can you, yeah. I mean, it is a moment in time that has not changed. And it's back in style. Yes. Apparently. We need an avocado green refrigerator. Yeah. I know there's a one around here somewhere. I know there's a gold, <laughs> gold refrigerator with yes. some matching sink around here somewhere. I'm, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting to see uh, where Don Draper's house is because I know it's around here. These are Mad Men houses. It very much and is. And they are definitely unique. You, stu you go on to some of these roads, some of these uh, streets, and you think you're back in the 50s and 60s. It's yeah. a great, great neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. We have had a blast here inside the roller cave. We're not done yet. There is still more to bring you about the Shiro Hills Ridgeview neighborhood. Let's take a look outside with live cam first from Drone 12, which has been flying high above this area all night long. You can see the quarry off there in the distance. And they have great views of the quarry, great views of downtown. You're watching KSAT's Know My Neighborhood. This is Sheer Hills Ridgeview. We've been talking about it all evening long. And we have more coming your way when we come back. Welcome back inside the Rollercade here, just off San Pedro and Ricoleta. This, I love this neighborhood and I yeah. love the roller cade. There, there are people of all abilities out there. Yes. And I'm, and I'm really worried that one of them may uh, fall and break a thermometer. Well, one of them thinks very highly of his abilities and he is skating around <laughs> with uh, a couple of thermometers somewhere out there. Adam Kasky, what you up to? Oh, he's taking oh, a he's second in the thermometer. Snack bar. I did one, I am. Taking a break. Got to hit the snack bar every once in a while, right? You got to rehydrate, replenish those electrolytes when you're working hard on the roller rink. And you know what? One thing I love about roller skating that came back to me, and as a father, is something you could do as a whole family together. Your kids will be, probably be better than you at this. And it's fun. You know, you could just see young and old out on the rink. Anyway, we have to talk about weather. Then we have very special Thermometer Thursday to get to. Warm today, 87 was our high. We'll be in the 70s tomorrow through the weekend, but the dew points are dropping already and the humidity is being swept away by a cold front. And look at our dew point trend. 
We're going to have low humidity the next three days, Friday, Saturday, and even on into Sunday. And then the humidity creeps back in as we get into the early part of next week, briefly until our next cold front arrives. So let's take a look at our forecast. Tonight, we're going to drop down through the 50s and start the day at 51 tomorrow morning. By noon, we're sunny in 70 and then 75 by 4 p.m. for the high temperature. Nothing but sunshine, low humidity, beautiful, cooler mornings with this drier air. 47 when you wake up on Saturday. Well, I mean, assuming you, know, you wake up around sunrise. If you do, it'll be 47. Then sunny in 75, low humidity, beautiful weekend, cool mornings, comfortable afternoons in the 70s. Next week, another cold front arrives on Wednesday, sweeping away the humidity for the end of next week, and it's probably going to have a little more of an impact on our temperatures behind that cold front. We were talking about it earlier. Let's get right to it. For a very special Thermometer Thursday, I'm joined by the McClellans here. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much. Dolly and Tom. So you live on Linda Drive. You survived the tornado seven years ago. Tell me the one thing you'll always remember from it. Oh, it was frightening. The shaking of the windows and that wind was blowing so hard. You, you would go outside, it would have blown you away. It was that strong. It really was. And what, what shocked you the most about it? Really, that, that there were no injuries in the neighborhood. Everybody survived it. And the beautiful thing about all this is it's a shame it takes a tragedy, but we all pull together. We all help one another. I wanted to help the neighborhood as well. Miss Elizondo lost her big oak tree. And so I made thermometers out of this old oak tree, and I want you to have one. I saved a few of these, and I think only people who are on Linda Drive and in this neighborhood deserve to have one. So this is for you. You're well. Feel how heavy that oak is. That was over 100 years old. All right, that's it. You can go to ksat.com slash thermometer to enter the drawing. I save special ones for special occasions. Back to you. Per perfect recipients for the Rebel to Relic. Thank you, Adam. Thank you to our Thermometer Thursday recipients. And uh, I've been abandoned. I'm by myself because Steve is on skates somewhere. We have to see that when we come back. Don't go anywhere. I got to see it too. We'll be right back. found them, everybody. Steve on skates and also a very special guest who was out on the rink, Mike, the one and only Mike from KSAT joining us here in Shearer Hills Ridgeview. Hey, Mike. Good to see you, Mike. By the way, I want to give the DJ here at the Rollercade a shout out because when Mike went out to the center of the rink, she said, I hope we don't have a mic drop. That was pretty good. That would be bad. That was pretty good. You By have the way, a whole I, crowd I, out there dancing around you, skating around you. He's a mic a few words, but he's got moves. He is a mic a few words, right. He's meant to amplify words, not speak them. <laughs> By the way, uh, I, I want to talk about the fact that Kasky's on skates, mm -hmm. Justin Horn's on skates, I'm on skates. There seems to be one of us that's not on skates other than Mike. I'm just saying. So where's Justin at? Come on. Justin, come here, look. We got Justin Horn. Grace personified is Justin <laughs> Horn right here. All right, fellas. Then, oh, can look at backwards skater Kasky. To show off. Yeah. You guys, you, you guys go take a lap. All right. I'll take it from here. <laughs> we'll be right back. Come back live here at the Rollercade in the Shearer Hills Ridgeview neighborhood, and uh, this is fun. Oh, yeah. This was a blast. Yeah. Thanks to everybody in this neighborhood for letting us share your stories. And welcome to the Rollercade, everybody. 